Now, I'd like to welcome in Kevin Green, senior markets correspondent for the network, to talk about what is apparently dragging on the overall market. That's ASML. Now, Kevin, this is not our first conversation about this stock. And I have to say that looking at their earnings now, they weren't terrible. They did still say demand is strong, but everyone wants to blame this name on like the overall sell off today. I mean, I just don't really get that. Well, it's actually when you're kind of looking at the numbers, they did actually miss significantly when it came to the net bookings that came in at around 2.6 billion euros. The street was looking for 5.6 billion. So you're talking about coming up around 3 billion short there. That's actually the issue that you are seeing with this earnings announcement is why we are seeing the share down uh, right now around 16 and a half, almost 17 percent. It's not the AI uh, side of the story, which is what um, Caroline was actually talking about earlier. It's it's the other businesses. It's more of the analog uh, side of their business that can continues to see a lot more weakness. And then they are being impacted when it comes to some of the export restrictions to certain countries uh, due to uh, certain restrictions that the, the U.S. has placed on them, as well as maybe some other countries. So unfortunately, this is the reason why we are seeing the shares down. Now, gross margins for Q3 did come in at 50.8%, which was in the company's expected range. And net income came in at uh, 2.1 billion euros. So once again, it's not so much the, the top line number that was reported. It's the bookings. It's the outlook moving forward and the demand moving forward, uh, when you miss by uh, a healthy amount there, uh, the stock's going to get uh, a, a negative reaction from that. So that's why we're seeing these shares down and kind of dragging down the semiconductor space. I'm not sure if it's the sole reason why the overall market is down, uh, but it's a really big uh, component of it. Yeah, and Kev, kind of, it kind of has that feel, if you even think that some of the reason a name like NVIDIA is selling off is due to this, that it's sort of like when Snapchat would come out and tell us that their business was abysmal, and then you'd see Meta crash, and then you'd see Apple go down. And it's kind of like, is Snap really going to tell us how Apple's doing when they sell iPhones and Snap is a digital advertising company? Is ASML even enough alike some of these other semiconductor names like an NVIDIA for us to even draw comparisons? No, so ASML is the one that creates the the equipment for the fab. So it's a really good gauge as to demand within the space. But once again, if the AI side of the business is really doing well, uh, that's really what what uh, you know Nvidia and even an AMD is really thriving on. So I'm not sure if it's a direct one to one correlation. But if you're looking at some of these other names uh, like an Intel or even a Micron, yeah, you could kind of say, okay, well, demand is still waning. Maybe a supply gluts are, are still going on here, uh, and you might not have, need some of the equipment from. SML, it could be a little bit of a forward-leaning indicator for some of those other analog tech players that are out there, but I'm not sure if it is for, for NVIDIA, which, once again, uh, is really focusing on the AI story, which is uh, continues to be very robust right now. I know. I guess I, I can understand some of the weakness in, in their metrics, not to say they had like a blowout earnings. I mean, by no means was it strong, but I guess objectively for like overall sentiment, to me, it didn't signal any like massive shock to NVIDIA. And that's where I guess I have a hard time making that relationship because, frankly, I did not realize how massive this company is. But if demand is as as really just abundant as everyone says it is, I mean, shouldn't NVIDIA and, and these other names be fine? Or is it just more of this perhaps export unknown story? I think it's more uh, just weighting of the sector in general. So sometimes you can actually have a situation where one company impacts a whole whole sector, and, and that could just be based on uh, institutional flows in general, uh, right? ETFs, uh, rebalancing uh, out, and things of that nature. So I think that's another reason why uh, NVIDIA is moving down to the downside here. You also did have the CEO kind of make a mention that China's contributions to total revenue uh, is going to decline to around 20% in 2025. We were sitting that they were sitting at around 49%. So I mean, that, once again, uh, if you're looking at the top line, decent, right? It, it's the, the the guidance moving forward, knowing that one of the biggest <laughs> purchasers of your product uh, is pretty much going to be cut in half when it comes to revenue stream is, is kind of a big deal. And then the booking side of it uh, coming in uh, well below you know, almost half of the uh, expected uh, guidance is, or expect expectations for the street is also uh, something that's a little concerning. But I, I think this is just a, a scenario of, uh, you know, once again, you, you impact the semiconductors sector, it's going to have an impact on some names that, that are just caught in the crossfire and, and really not a direct beneficiary of a good report or a bad report. Kev, when you look at the overall market, uh, a little bit of weakness today, just overdue natural healthy selling and a pullback here, or is there something to be worried about yet? 
Uh, I would not be too concerned right now. I mean, uh, we've had five days uh, in the green here for the S&P 500. So, you know, if you go to the casino and you're, you're playing roulette, one, one, at one point in time, you're going to hit red. Uh, and I think that's kind of what's happening right now. I think we are just seeing a little bit of a sell-off and even a half a percent of the downside is not really aggressive. Uh, the 5830 level for the S&P 500 has been the key area of uh, support here. That's our negative gamma level that we've been tracking all day. It's been able to hold for the most part. Uh, you want to be able to continue to do so. And maybe if we get a good um, market on close number when it comes to um, you know order balance uh, and if it's favorable maybe we do see a short covering rally into the close here like we've seen so many times before yeah and i think well put here and an interesting story nonetheless i mean rarely do you see a company that reports early we sometimes see errors but it, it is just always an interesting way to look at some of the pressure obviously here today but we'll leave it there kevin green senior markets correspondent for the network